Here's an example curly program. So we've decided that the curly syntax will look like this, curly plus two one, but to actually run, to actually interpret a curly program, we have to represent it as a plate value, which uh, that curly program would be represented by this plate value. If you go into Dr. Racket and you just type uh, plus one two, it turns out that that also overlaps with the plate syntax, since curly braces and round parens and square brackets are all interchangeable. So we can't actually write a program for curly using curly brace plus one two like that. But what we can do is write plus one two, but then put a back quote in front of it. That gives us an S expression that has the same information as the literal text curly plus one two. So when we write an S expression, we get something that's not an instance of the exp data type, but that we want to turn into an exp data type. And if we, we do that by writing a program called parse. So our parse function is going to take an S expression, turn it into uh, an exp, and then we will be able to, to pass that on to interp, say. Uh, so the job of plus is to take this S expression plus 2, 1 and turn it into plus e num e 2, 1. If we think about the legal inputs to parse, well, parse at, at the plate type level is just going to take an S expression. But only certain S expressions should be allowed as curly programs by parse. Uh, it should be an S expression that's just a number. So back quote two should represent the curly program two. Um, or a plus expression or a times expression, where plus and times have sub-expressions that are also the same constrained shape of X. So um, our goal then is to translate these S expressions into this data type that is the job of the parse function. But the parse function is going to have to look at his S expression and figure out which case of this S expression description uh, it is in to convert it into the corresponding exp defined type. Let's look at just one of those cases, the last one. Let's look at the, the multiplication case. Parse is going to take an S expression, its job is to return an expression, and it's going to have to decide whether S matches this shape that we have in our comment here as the grammar for curly programs. So if S is an X expression, we want to make sure that S has a list like, it's a list. So to perform that matching, we have an S expression, S. We first make sure that it's a list like S expression, uh, by using sx list. So that makes sure that it's back quote curly brace something. And then we want to make sure that there are three parts inside of that list like s expression. Uh, and we need a times and we need two other expressions. So once we know that it's of length three, then we can take that list like s expression, get the list out, and take the first s expression out of that. And we want to make sure that that is in fact a symbol s expression. And then we want to make sure that if we take that symbol S expression, coerce it to a plain symbol, compare it to times, or the, you know, the asterisk symbol here is times, make sure that that matches up. And we're not done testing, really. We're not done checking the shape of S, um, because we also need to make sure that the, the uh, second and the third parts are also valid expressions. This is getting very tedious, just to make sure that it has the right shape and we're not even done. Fortunately, there's a helper function uh, provided by plate called sxmatch. And sxmatch takes two s expressions, but it treats the first one as a kind of pattern to match against the second one. And in that first s expression, most things are literal, like the curly braces here mean that s has to, ha has to be list-like, and uh, the star here means that s needs to start with that star. But any and all caps is a special word to s expression match, and that means allow anything. So this one line does all of the work that was on the previous slide. It does this much work, which is not all of the work, but it's a lot simpler to write this much, and it's necessary steps. The reason I have to write any here instead of just exp is because S expression match only knows a few built-in things. It knows about numbers, and it knows about symbols, and it knows about booleans, but it doesn't know about our definition of expressions. We could try to teach S expression match about that, but in fact, that's what parse is already doing. It's already checking whether we have something that matches this S expression syntax. So what we're going to do instead is use S expression match to check the outer shape, the initial shape. And then once we know that S at least has the right basic shape, then we know that we can pull the second part out of it, say, and pass that second part to parse. 
that that call here, this parse second S expression list, will make sure that this any right here, as it appears in S, is actually some valid expression according to our description of what expression should be.